so yeah, the the questions, right? Um, so we got one uh, one new question in in Slido. So Charles is asking about uh, introducing BDD and Gherkin syntax into Cypress tests. So if we have any suggestions, uh, maybe opinions about this one. Uh, so Mike, have you used the the BDD, Gherkin, Cucumber kind of stuff in Cypress? I haven't. I've been asked about it. I I know that there is a. Um, I don't know how well it's been maintained, but I know that there is a Cypress plugin mm -hmm. for um, for that syntax. Um, and I've used um, uh, not used. I've been more just somewhat familiar with Robot Framework. Um, mm -hmm. In the past, that's really my only exposure to um, to that. I know that there are um, some benefits to um, to that syntax when you have non engineers contributing to mm -hmm. the, the the tests. Um, but to be honest, I don't really have. I, I've never. I haven't had an opportunity to um, to uh, apply it, and so. Mm -hmm. As such, I don't really have a whole lot of, uh, or rather, enough experience to to really say much more okay. um, in that regard. What about you? Uh, so I have tried it uh, with um, with like the intention to just try it. So let me share my screen because uh, this is the plugin uh, you've been talking about. So there is Cypress Cucumber preprocessor which can uh, which enables you to write tests like this right so you have the feature scenario given when then etc so uh the, the way it works is that you it's it's sort of a page object model uh but it's, it's kind of different but basically you have these abstractions which you can sort of like create these puzzle pieces which you connect together and create a test which is sort of uh, very readable, right? So when I visit DuckDuckGo, I can see a search bar. Then I should see a search bar. And you have your when thing, which will execute this part of code. And then you have a then thing in your, uh, which will execute this part of code. And then you can sort of mix and match and create new scenarios with this. Uh, and what, what this will do, it's called a cucumber preprocessor. So that's that's an interesting thing. We we touched on TypeScript actually, and uh, and they do have one thing in common. So when you create your tests in Cypress, uh, they're going to be uh, processed and then injected into browser. So if you write your right. uh, tests in TypeScript, for for example your tests, your TypeScript files are actually going to be compiled into JavaScript, injected to a browser, and then ran. And a similar thing is going to happen with this Cucumber preprocessor. And there's also a Markdown preprocessor, which is just going to take a look, in this case, in uh, into your feature files, and basically is going to compile and read the scenarios and then create a JavaScript file which is going to execute these pieces of code to, to run your tests. Uh, there are multiple different preprocessors. So there's like a webpack roll up. So that's like different ways of how you can uh, how you can run those. But where's the where's the markdown one? I wanted to show that. Oh, here it is, right in front of my face. So yeah, you can write a test in Markdown where you would have like these three parts, the HTML part, the application you want to test and the JS part, which is the uh, test code. Uh, Gleb likes to use this. Uh, it's really nice if you have like a small, uh, small example that you want to show. And again, this will take the file, convert it into JavaScript, uh, inject it into your uh, browser and then run it. So that's that's what these preprocessors do, and Cucumber is one of one of these. Uh, but yeah, so hmm. what this enables you to do to create is to create these feature files where you have your scenarios, 
And these uh, are uh, sort of like they can help you to uh, to like use a sort of a natural language to uh, to describe your tests. And uh, uh, to be honest, I'm not like the biggest fan of this approach. And the, the, the reason for that is that whenever I want to create a new scenario, uh, I need to create this when or then or some kind of definition over here, uh, which is not necessarily a bad thing. But I think what's not really effective about this is that when we create these scenarios, we're basically repeating the same code blocks over and over and just creating different combinations of those. And um, I'm not really sure if that's uh, really valuable. So there's a lot of a lot of talking about like the, the whole abstraction, whole idea of of page objects and abstracting your code is that you don't repeat yourself, right? But then for some reason, we <laughs> create these abstractions and repeat them over and over and over, go through all of the same scenarios over and over uh, and repeat the same set of actions uh, all the time. And I think we should apply this don't repeat yourself um, principle to the code or to test execution as well as our code. Although like I'm not, um, not trying to overuse the principle, uh, but, uh, uh, but yeah, the, I, I think with this kind of uh, Gherkin BDD syntax, you will be doing a lot of repeating yourself. So uh, generally I'm not, not a huge fan of this. Uh, another another argument for using this is that anyone can create uh, these tests if you have if you have these uh, defined. And uh, the counter argument uh, from my side is why should they? <laughs> why do we want anyone to create uh, create these tests? Um, they still need to use uh, uh, some kind of code editor, so it's not going to be I don't know, like, like your customer success people in the company or product managers or I don't know who uh, creating these tests. Uh, it's still going to be testers. So why not just let testers write these? Because they're going to do them anyway. And I think that they'll be much more effective using these because the Cypress syntax is already quite readable. Uh, of course, if you don't overcomplicate stuff. Uh, and... Uh, and I think it's, you should be fine with this. You still have your describe blocks. You still have, um, you still have your it blocks, and you can actually export them if you just need a report of what's being tested, which scenarios are being tested. Again, that's a that's a problem you can easily solve uh, with a plugin. I think Gleb uh, wrote one for that, like where you can just export all of the names of your tests. So yeah, that's kind of my rent yeah. <laughs> about the, the, the cucumber. <laughs> it's fairly easy to use. I did a stream on uh, cucumber preprocessors back like two years ago. So if if you want to watch me struggle with that, you can you can go watch that on my channel. But uh, in general, I uh, can't say I'm a big fan. <laughs>